Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Here we are and this is my palette of colours. <laughs> um, I'll list the uh, colours in the, the description below, hopefully, if I remember. Um, if I've forgotten, just leave me a comment if you really, if you, if you need to know the colours and I've forgotten to put them in, just give me a comment. <laughs> Say, uh, um, can you put the uh, colours in there? <laughs> but to be honest, it doesn't really matter what colours I'm using, um, because you could do this with a different selection of colours. That's interesting, isn't it? So what's going on here is I'm looking for the middle parts of these objects. Now the photo is not exactly the angle I'm seeing because I've got these set up on the side and I'm painting what I see. Um, I really enjoy doing this, painting, or trying to paint I should say, what I see because it's really challenging, it really is hard. <laughs> but you do improve as a painter a lot quicker um, I find anyway especially with like scale and things I mean I'm not saying this painting turns out perfect because it doesn't but it does um, look pretty good I'm pretty proud of it um, as a uh, amateur painter <laughs> just like uh, most of the people that I know um, I'm pretty happy Pretty happy. Even uh, even happy with the process I used as well. Because what I start doing um, is this. <laughs> is what you see. I kind of paint in a watercolour approach at the beginnings of paintings now. So I thin my colour and create a sketch for this and uh, and then I kind of fill in the darks with a kind of a, a watercolor of oil because I'm using water mixable oils you can thin them with a little bit of water so that's what I've done to do this bit I mix it with water and then uh, it dries and there's hardly any pigment on there, hardly any at all, to uh, bother you for when you paint him. So this system, <laughs> it's no real different to any other system, um, to be honest. All oil painting systems are, well, to me they're all the same. <laughs> I know uh, uh, that. I think because I've tried so many systems and it all, at the end of the day, we're, all, we're trying to create a painting. So we're putting paint pigment on a surface. So I just see it as the same. I just think it's all the same because we're just really putting pigment on a surface and whatever brushes we use or whatever paints we use, it's still putting pigment on a surface. So you could do this in acrylics if you wanted. You could do a watercolour, um, you could do oils, markers, pencils, pastels, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you're observing tone and shape, and that's it. <laughs> tone, shape, colour, which I kind of put in the same bracket as tone in a way because I see colour in different tones. So, <laughs> so here I am. This is a specialist uh, way of measuring using my finger. <laughs> Trying to work out the size of the bottle. Now, what I did do is make myself some little marks before I even started because I, I use a, uh, a proportional divider um, Thing that I got um, because I find it a bit quicker than using a ruler now I've always used a broken ruler <laughs> but I lost it so um, 
I started using a new ruler and then I saw this on a proportional divider on eBay and I thought oh, well I'll give it a go and I quite like it it's quite fast for measuring but I only really do it um, at the beginning just to get the height size and uh, the reason I do that <laughs> is because I want to place my objects in the center of the canvas so I don't have a painting where the coca-cola bottle was like hanging off the edge of the canvas <laughs> or I have to put another canvas next to it to finish off the composition and uh, I, I have been in that situation a few times so I'm avoiding that by doing this <laughs> I'm using my camera screen, and if you saw me then, I was having a little peek in the screen through the reflection. <laughs> and, uh, oh, uh, yeah, and I was like, that size, it just doesn't look right. Something's not right. So I got the proportional divider and went right up to the object and went, mm, and just put it next to it. So I can see what I'm doing wrong. Um... I quite like doing this and I do know um, there we go there it is a Derwent proportional divider I, I think it's called a scaler actually it's for uh, scaling up things but I'm just using it like a ruler that's the way I like using it just go right up to the object and measure it and uh, the reason I do that is because I kn knew of a professional painter, a very, very good portrait painter, um, exceptional, who advised me to <laughs> to actually go up to us when you're doing a portrait. Say you've got someone sat with you and you're doing a portrait, to actually go up to them with a ruler and measure them with the ruler on their face. And that's why I started with a broken ruler. That, that, that was uh, the advice I got. And it does, does work. Because what happens is you're, you train yourself with the ruler or like a little divider or whatever. Eventually you don't need it. You get better and better. Now I'm up in my practice level at the moment because uh, I've got some time off work. Woohoo! <laughs> So I'm uh, doing lots of paintings. So the colour I'm using to start with is ivory black and burnt umber. Ivory black and burnt, burnt umber. And that's the Coca-Cola dark colour that I, that I can see. Now, um, the photo isn't exact to what I see, um, but I just wanted you to see... Um, to get an idea of what I'm trying to paint, really. So I'm, my first thought was, head for the dark, the dark, the dark, dark. <laughs> the darkest bit. Head for the darkest bit and just block it in. With painting, and, and I think this is with painting anything, there's so much information there that... It's hard to know where to start, and uh, I find start somewhere. <laughs> I'm I'm not uh, a painter who believes you should start in the darkest darks or the, well or middle, but I, I do feel at the moment that I want to hold back the lights. Um, I want to hold back these highlights and shines and things like that. So I kind of do a dull painting and then I add the light on top of it. And uh, that that sort of system I find very useful. Uh, holding the light till the last bit. That way, if you're out painting, <laughs> this happens if you've done plein air painting you'll know what happens um, you're out there and you're painting away enjoying yourself loving it feeling like you're the next great master <laughs> and uh, 
you start painting something like painting this these trees and then the sun shines on certain areas of the tree trunks and you think oh this is brilliant and you start painting away and then the sun goes and you're like ah oh, now I can't remember how that light was and I've already painted part of it <laughs> so what I tend to do now is I'll paint the whole thing in a sort of a dull way and then uh, if I can remember or if I suddenly see the light change then I can paint that and it doesn't matter so much because I'm committed to a a certain lightness I hope that makes sense because I'm in the same sort of position doing this because I've got the light coming from outside I'm trying to do my paintings using natural light and um, the room's naturally lit and the light coming from outside is natural so so I'm trying to do at the moment trying to avoid using lights And the reason for that is I've been painting using natural light and my paintings look better. But whatever room I put them in, they look good. Where paintings I've done under artificial light, um, I brought into other rooms, they just don't look as good. So it's just my own, my own way. <laughs> So that bit of uh, coke that you can see on the top is a bit lighter so I had a bit more brown and then a little bit of white just to make it lighter. Now those um, lines in the middle of the bottle and in the cup they do really help um, because then you can see both sides being a symmetrical object um, you can try and copy <laughs> the symmetry and uh, the line in the middle just helps so you've got the distance from both sides should be the same to the line just helps a little bit so if you're looking at this uh, video and you're thinking ah oh, I don't want to pay paint coca-cola I'm more into Diet Coke or <laughs> or maybe you prefer the uh, the green Coke or something else then that's up to you you paint whatever soft drink that you want to you want to paint I got myself this so I wanted to paint this I wanted to paint that um, that color the sort of dark caramel color of the coca-cola <laughs> And I quite like the idea of the red as well. Yeah, from where I'm sat, I can see the ellipses of the fluid um, on the photo. You can't really see those ellipses as well. So ellipses are quite hard um, for me, personally. And uh, one thing I try to think about is... Imagine, <laughs> I, yeah, the best way for me to say it is I imagine the actual bottle in my mind and I imagine the whole bottle, the whole sphere, spherical shape. And when I, in my mind, I'm imagining it, even though it's there in front of me, I also imagine the whole bottle going on. And then I'll do. <laughs> I don't know if that's making sense. I'm, I'm using my imagination as well as my imagery through my eyes. <laughs> Drawing through, that's the best way to uh, describe it. When you draw the whole thing in your mind or on the canvas, it makes it easier to paint it. So I delved into my bag, <laughs> got a carrier bag there full of paints, uh, water mixable paints mostly. And I was looking for a, a 
a yellow ochre. And then the, because what I want to do is get that board painted in. So we've got some burnt sienna there, some yellow ochre. And I'm just mixing that, getting some of the titanium white. Uh, while those paints are there, you can see there's ultramarine blue, burnt umber, ivory black, cadmium red light, and cadmium red deep. Uh, they're all water mixable oils on the Windsor and Newton range, apart from the yellow ochre, which is uh, my own homemade paint. But you could do this in traditional oils or or whatever, like I said. <laughs> so I'm just looking at the the height of the board from where it goes to uh, before it hits the background. Now the background, I'm not actually painting in those hairy bits. <laughs> That's actually, um, no, I bought that. I can't remember the reason for it. I think it was when I was going to make a costume. And I've had it ages. <laughs> it's never made it into a costume, all right, though. But it works as a good backdrop because it's quite dark. I might have to use it in a painting, it might look pretty good with something on it. So really this area, I'm just blocking it in the one colour. Um, one of the tips that I've been given is um, get rid of all your whites as soon as you can. <laughs> And uh, I do have that in my mind when I'm painting because if you can get rid of all the white as soon as you can then you can see the whole painting and then you can add in your details and things and work it all as one rather than uh, separate areas. That's why I sit quite far back uh, from the painting as well. I don't want to uh, zoom in on areas I want to sit back and see it all unfold, the whole painting unfold. I know uh, some painters of the past would paint with really long handled brushes. They'd have them specially made, extra long handles, so they can see um, what they're doing. They're sitting quite far back. I think can't remember the name of the artist, but the the brush length was 18 inches. <laughs> so you can sit really far away, but see what you're doing. And that, that's the main problem with painters. And I put myself in that bracket, is you'd get really close, really close to the painting and painting all these details in, and they're really not needed. Unless you're going for that photograph look. <laughs> I'm, I'm, personally, I don't want to do that. I've done that in the past. I've done uh, for, for myself. I've done like rendered and rendered and rendered to make him look almost real. So I'm just scrubbing in the uh, back, the background, and this colour is uh, just ultramarine blue and a little bit of yellow ochre and then a little bit of white as well. So it's almost the colour of that hairy monster behind the Coca-Cola. <laughs> I just scrub it in. Scrubbing the paint in, so I scrub in most of my paint really when I first start because I don't want too much on. And the more paint you have on, the more 
awkward it becomes to change things. So I've got in the habit of making it making it quite thin to start with. Don't forget you can mix your paint on the actual canvas as well. You don't have to uh, always mix on your palette. I'm scrubbing away, <laughs> holding the canvas because I haven't got it um, on properly. Usually I, <laughs> I keep forgetting, but I used to put a board on and then blue tack the back of it um, to stop it from wobbling, but I forgot. So I hold on to it until I'm done and then uh, it's all right. <laughs> Sitting back, having a look, resting your shoulder, looking at the screen to see what it looks like. And I noticed a few errors, but, and it was a bit shiny, but there's nothing really I can do about that because oil paint is reflective. Um, I'm going to try and improve my setup, but we'll see. <laughs> at least you get an idea of what I do. So then when you do yours, um, you can uh, you can just go for it. <laughs> if you've seen me do it, you know you can do it. I'm just going to uh, blend the background into the board. My brushes are all random brushes. Uh, a couple of them are Windsor and Newton ones, and then uh, some of them are just Dale Rowney graduate ones. It's a bit of a random mix. <laughs> well, I'll use whatever I can get hold of. <laughs> Sometimes sitting back having a look is just an excuse to rest your arm. <laughs> so I'm just filling that in, that hole uh, where the handle is. I did feel that I wasn't quite getting the shape of that right when I was doing it. But it's not bad, it's pretty close. I do have to think to myself sometimes not to get too bogged down with things because in the past, when I've tried, say I tried to paint this, I would never get it done because I would get so specific finicky about things and and sometimes you can talk yourself out of doing a painting <laughs> because you can tell yourself oh this is going to take me too long or I'm going to think about this being wrong all the time and I'm never going to get it right so what's the point and you can talk yourself out so I'm I never think about things like that anymore I always think um I think I'm going to enjoy myself and just get get painting <laughs> and see what happens. Because you know every time you do a painting you're going to learn a bit more. It's challenging but it's fun so that's what I think. I'm 
just scrubbing away. <laughs> just going, going, I'm sort of on the painter's ride. <laughs> Not worrying. My my arm was starting to get tired from scrubbing the paint. <laughs> Sitting back. Just sitting back. Having a look at the uh, the painting and the way the background looks. I mean, it's just plain. And that's what we wanted. So I uh, had a bit of a break. <laughs> Walk around the garden, come back, and then I'm ready again. So I'm making a, uh, a grey, a light grey, using a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. It's really just a lighter version of the background. And I'm, I squinted my eyes down. <laughs> and I was looking at the cup, the top part of the cup, the whole of the cup. I was trying to work out what's the best way to go. And... Uh, my eyes were saying a lighter version, slightly lighter version of the background. And then I can add in the, uh, the lighter, lighter bits afterwards. I can just put them on top. And like I said, because I'm scrubbing the paint on quite thinly, you can do that. You can put colours on top and it doesn't get affected too much. And also you can see um, how dull <laughs> it, it looks at the moment. And uh, you get that excitement feeling because you know when you start adding those lights, it's going to be so much better. <laughs> So here we go, just making a bit more ultramarine blue, going in with that brownie mixture and a bit of white. And I'm looking at the handle, just to fill in that in. Jamming that in between the easel part. Blocking in the bottom part. Same, same sort of dull grey. So I'm not using that many colours. I'm uh, keeping it, keep it a limited palette. Keeping it quite simple, and uh, I have to keep it simple because I'm a simple painter. <laughs> so uh, simplicity is key for me. Simplifying. I find though, if my painting looks um, a bit dull, then I'm happy because I, then I know once the whole painting has that sort of dullness, <laughs> I know I'm ready for the highlights and that makes me happy. 
because they're the fun they're the fun bits they're the bits that you can just go around with your juicy paint and just put them on <laughs> so this works quite well having a reflection because then you can see me squinting my eyes and sitting back having a look it's like having another camera <laughs> and holding the brush up holding the brush up and uh, right right next to what you're painting and then you can check the colours now when I was saying about being told to use a ruler when you're doing portraits um, another thing you can do <laughs> When you're mixing your colour tones, you can hold your brush right up to their face and then you can mix your uh, colours. Just try not to paint on them. Good way to practice. And actually, doing things like this, like what I'm doing here, doing a still life, that's going to make me a better colourist, a better painter with colour because you learn a heck of a lot more doing something like this than you would mixing squares. <laughs> I hate, hate with a capital H, mixing squares. You know when you get these recipe books of for painters on how to mix colours and stuff like that. I I hate that sort of stuff. And uh, and the reason I don't like it is because it restricts you a bit to the recipes of the, there and doing squares now I've done squares I have painted squares but it, I didn't get anything out of it to be honest I didn't feel like I was learning more about the colours um, so my suggestion if you're a beginner to painting or if you've gone through doing squares and it's not really improved your art <laughs> hey, it might be just me i might be just a bad learner then uh, have a go at just painting things and use your paint to paint stuff and rather than paint squares doing like these weird science experiments with color it just seems a bit, I don't know. <laughs> Better not complain about it too much because there's probably some artists out there that really love doing squares. <laughs> and each to their own, I guess. But I find you learn a lot more doing this anyway. So there's a fly flying around. Took me ages to catch it, but eventually I caught it. I kicked it out the door. <laughs> I do uh, try and respect nature, but this fly, this fly was getting to me. It kept diving on top of me and then flying off and then flying on and flying off. lucky because there's a big spider living in my living room and uh, it's lucky I kicked it out the door <laughs> so I've got to admit top part of this bottle ouch it was hard <laughs> it's me using my fingers again finger shapes and I was like what, why, what's wrong what? something's wrong and I, I thought the width of it's wrong And then I started to feel like I was getting 
coming back to the right shape again. <laughs> Just about. I know it looks almost like the same colour when you're watching on video, but it was. <laughs> It was uh, different. I could see it quite clear anyway. It wasn't a massive amount lighter, but it was lighter. So I'm just getting that bit in between the Coke label and the Coca-Cola. <laughs> So I purposely uh, poured enough out and then I had to swig a little bit to make the coke below the red line because I wanted to give myself a bit more of a challenge. So getting this to be level so it didn't look like it, I'm in a ship. That was quite challenging actually. And what, what you should do, <laughs> what I didn't do, is use a, uh, a ruler or something to create your straight line across. Um, that way you can get your ellipse along a straight line. And then it won't look like the fluids like that. <laughs> It'll make it like that. Um, I did consider getting it, uh, but I never did. But it's something that I can correct. There's only a minor correction that needs doing, but I can correct it after the fact. Do it tomorrow or something, or when it's dry, just put a little bit of paint on. Because these uh, paintings I'm doing at the moment, they're all a la prima, they're all done in one go. But when the paint dries, you can keep going. You can do a little bit more detail you can improve things, so it fix things. And then you have the challenge of trying not to overwork it. Because <laughs> sometimes these are errors uh, that are within your picture. They can, they can give your picture a little bit of um, sort of a free look, more more than an overworked look. If you're uh, fiddling around, improving it, you can overwork a painting and it m makes it look a little bit stilted. So that's a, another, another challenge, <laughs> working out when to stop. So I really wanted to do that juicy red bit. <laughs> so what I worked out is the red is not as bright as I first thought. It's more, I, I found it more on the red cadmium red deep than on the cadmium red light. Um, so I used cadmium red deep. <laughs> and there was a, I used a tiny bit of the cadmium red light and uh, it looked pretty close, pretty close. And I don't worry about getting it spot on anymore, um, to be honest. I just want to get it pretty close. If I can get it pretty close, I'm happy. <laughs> And putting this red on, I'm doing the same thing. Quite thin paint, as in scrubbed on. And I used a little bit of uh, burnt umber to make it a bit duller at the edge as well. And then I put a bit more of the cabin red light as I went round to this end. So there was a, a, uh, a bit of a 
gradient as it goes round. But yeah, the paint's scrubbed on though. Trying to get that ellipse right there. And there was a hair there, so I've licked it off. <laughs> Sitting back, having a look, having a think, wiping my finger. Bit of burnt sienna. In with the red. And I made a bit of a dark. Um, there was a bit of burnt umber in that as well, actually. And I made a bit of a dark for that cap. Because I can see the cap at the top of it, it's a bit of a dull red, and below it's a dull red, and then in between, it looks really bright. Look, the, the top actually looked brighter than the label. Whether it was just the way the light was hitting it to make it brighter, or or the way it was reflecting off the plastic of it. I'm not sure, but I just went with it. It looked bright, so I painted it bright. I'm just cleaning the base up there with a little bit of paint. So I always save my uh, paint if I do like a base, a um, like a ground colour and a background colour. I always save it because you can use it to clean up. And of course, if you're painting like this, where you're not using that much paint and you're spreading it around a bit, sort of scrubbing it on, then uh, you find you can do that quite easily because you've not got a lot of paint on there. And I threw a bit of white in, just to change things up a bit there. Doing these little bits do make a difference to your painting. These little bits of cleaning the painting up a little bit. It does make a difference, big difference to be honest. <coughs> Just getting that light in behind. So I'm playing a little bit with light, to be honest. Sometimes I'll make the light work for me. <laughs> and what I mean is, um, like the uh, the darkest darks next to the light, a lighter light, it'll make the dark stand out more. So sometimes I play with that, but. Um, I might go through stuff like that in a separate episode. More the technical aspects of uh, painting, drawing, design and things. So I'm doing something on my palette. <laughs> what I'm actually doing is I was mixing the uh, colour of the label and the, as the, la the red label goes round, you see the other side of it and uh, it's got plastic in between the label and my eye. So it changes colour from that white to more of a, I put a little bit of blue in with the red. And uh, uh, there's a little bit of brown in there as well. <laughs> there's all sorts in that actually. It's just looking at it does it look white i mean what tone is it is it a bit to the red or i tend to find things um a lot of the time a bit of red and a bit of blue and 
<laughs> Always seems to work. Doesn't matter what it is. Even if it's a banana. A little bit of red, a little bit of blue somewhere, it'll work. <laughs> It's become my go-to. If there's no, if there's a problem with my colour mixing, I just go with a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, make sort of a lavender colour, and then throw that in with something else, and it always works. So I'm looking, looking at the painting, looking at the item, sitting back, looking, and you've got to do a lot of looking. <laughs> Observing, trying your best to observe anyway. Trying your best to get that ellipse right. And trying, because you, when you're using your red, and that's a strong red, you don't want to be bodging that up too much. Because <laughs> the red is going to, even if you're using a little bit, it's going to um, it's going to attack your colours, and you have to somehow wipe it off. So uh, start with a dull one like that. Try and get it in the right place. Never feel uh, when you're painting. Never feel like you have to rush. Never, you never want to be painting in a rush. You always want to relax, especially if you're painting for um, for relaxation, for enjoyment, and to be happy and relaxed. All you can think about is painting. There's no worries, no trouble, nothing. Just painting. Just you in the paint. And that's why I like painting, it relaxes my mind. You don't think about anything else other than, like with this one, other than Coca-Cola. <laughs> A sugary treat. <laughs> and, and it said on it, um, original taste. Strange, actually, Coca-Cola, the uh, creator, created it. Um, as a, a means to get off taking a drug, I think it was. I think he was using it to get off painkillers, something like that. So I'm starting to add in the lights, and I even keep my light lights to begin with quite dull as well so I've not gone overboard with my highlighting light <laughs> wonder how many times I can say highlight and light <laughs> so th this approach now is m more painterly See, I've done the hard work in massing in the shapes, putting in the uh, dull painting. Now I can start bringing the painting to life. I can start turning the light on a little bit more. I'm just looking at the way the light's reflecting on the item and then I try and replicate that with paint. for the light looking for those light there's from where I I'm sat I can see two light lines where on the photo it's sort of become 
almost a half and half in a way. But yeah, there's two light lines coming from the, the door. So I'm just making a a reddish, a reddy brown colour. Because there's a, you can see the uh, reflection of the label or something in in that side. So I just put that in. And the coke, uh, it's a uh, thinnest <laughs> layer, um, as if, if if you put it a little bit on some white, then it would look like a lighter brown, browny red. So thinking about the transparency of it. Here I just wanted to cut in. If you cut in with the background paint, you can make the um, handle thinner. And I also did the same thing to make my highlights thinner. Cut it in. wiping my brush old rags are very handy <laughs> bit more of the light see it's almost a process of getting a bit lighter Getting a bit lighter and then getting a bit lighter <laughs> until you get to your lightest lights. That's kind of the way I'm doing it at the moment anyway. I always change the way I paint to be honest. But I do like this method. The method of try and make it sort of just paint everything in a, a dull lighting setup with no specific light and then come in with the light afterwards. I do like it. There's that sparkle there and there. So you know when you do that you don't even touch the brush, you just touch the paint on the canvas. It's very light pressure. So it's just the paint that comes off. Just mixing away there. <laughs> Throwing in, basically it's the background color with white in it. And it's just been thin. not thinned. <laughs> I wanted to say a thin line at the same time. So I noticed that light that was going down kind of breaks where the uh, lip of the glass is so I needed to make sure I did that. Shape that bit of light on there. I'm just checking out the light 
again that's coming across. I'm just painting in these um, little marks to <laughs> to kind of make you believe that this is the neck of the bottle. <laughs> there isn't actually much detail there. Um, that's something else I try to do at the moment, is not do too much detail. I kind of do enough. Well, I try to anyway. Anyway, try to think I'm doing just enough and that's it. I didn't notice at first there's like a mould on the plastic bottle. That um, creates, I don't know if it says it's got a symbol or it. Maybe it says Coca-Cola on the plastic or something, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to be using this bottle as my uh, water holder for when I go out watercolour painting now. <laughs> so I needed a new bottle. I'm trying to look at the way where, where the lights hit in and just go for it. So the uh, paint mixes there with that dark colour, but I'm not bothered because it's not a bright white that's on there. So I just wanted to get these lines in there. Just wiping my brush on a paper towel. <laughs> more the light just sparkling what I might do is I might see if I can get some glass bottles with uh, something in and paint that maybe I can get something different like a cherry aid <laughs> <laughs> maybe something a different color So what I like about doing these um, still lives is that they're so challenging. <laughs> they are really difficult, but they're really fun. I do find them fun and uh, I'm enjoying uh, doing them. I've got memories of uh, serving people Coca-Cola and Pepsi and stuff when I used to work in a cinema. <laughs> I used to be the guy that serves drinks and popcorn and sells cinema tickets and take people to their seats with a torch as an usher. I used to do that. <laughs> Seems like a previous life now. It was quite a long time ago. I do have some good memories though, being a cinema worker. Got to watch a few movies. So I'm painting in the barcode. <laughs> and I see that as just a white splodge, so I thought if I just do a bit of a white splodge, 
it can indicate the barcode. And there's another white bit there. Because I don't want to be going into too much detail, like I said. Um, just enough detail. That's what I want, just enough. Not too much. Because if you start doing too much in one area, you've got to do it everywhere. <laughs> Well, my thought is you do anyway. Just putting some marks in and then got to somehow script in the Coca-Cola. <laughs> and here's where it all goes wrong. <laughs> Welcome to my world of struggling. <laughs> so if you make a mistake you can just scrub it in with the red pick up more red if you need and put that on and then pick up some more white and have another go Let's see oil painting is really forgiving in that way here's me having another go not really understood the letter, the way the C curls around quite yet, and I ended up making my own up. <laughs> and I actually thought, oh, that's quite good. And then I look again, and I'm like, oh. See, I'm still okay with it. I haven't noticed properly that it's too small. <laughs> and I sat back and I was like, hmm, well, that doesn't work. That's annoying. <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with mine? Why doesn't mine work? And then I realized that the O is further in the C. So I was like, all right, get some red on my brush and scrub it away again. <laughs> and then I started to tell myself, well, I know what's wrong. I know why I can't do it right. It's because I haven't got any linseed oil. So, you know, a thin paint will stick to a thicker paint. So I go, <laughs> I go hunting around for some uh, water mixable linseed oil, and I have got some, and then uh, I decide that's the reason I can't do it, it's because of that. It's not because I haven't properly looked at the Coca-Cola writing, here we go. Uh, water mixable in seed oil and I admit I have not really looked at the coca-cola writing the way it's uh, the nice script that they use so I get my linseed oil I dip my brush in and then I uh, spin it around on the paint and the brush I'm using is a bit, a bit soft actually, a bit too soft, really. I should have really grabbed a uh, one of my Bob Ross script liners, to be honest, and I'd probably have do a bit better. But this is what I had in my hand, so it's a uh, rigger brush, I think.
<laughs> see, I left all this in because it's good to see how, you know, we all make mistakes, we all struggle, we all pull our hair out when we're painting. I'm, I'm only a, uh, a human being painting. <laughs> Not that I think that anyone thinks I'm some sort of hero or anything, but um, it just proves how hard it is. So you really need to look at the letter and uh, to get it right. I really looked at the way that the shape of the C is and I've never really looked at it before. To be honest, I think that's a little bit low. Probably needs hiring a little bit, but <laughs> I was happy. Move on. Like I said, if you start thinking, oh no, that's low, you need to do that again. Blah, blah, blah. I, w I would just throw my brush down and I'd walk out. <laughs> Be like, oh no, I can't do this. It, it's too difficult. I just can't get it right. See, I got a little bit of that blob of white there. I used the other end of the brush to get rid of it. <laughs> I dipped it into a bit of paint as well. So some artists, you'll see that they grow their little fingernail so they can use it to balance on their painting. Or you can use a maul stick. I uh, just I just stick my finger on the paint and then wipe it off and then have to repaint that bit. <laughs> I've tried other things. I used to actually use a curtain pole at one stage. It did work all right, but then I don't know. I've always just put my finger somewhere on the paint. Needed to get that bit of red on there just to make that top of the bottle look better. And just cover, got to cover up my errors of uh, putting my thing, finger on the uh, painting. Just got to get rid of those bits. <laughs> Just getting these bits a bit lighter now, using a lighter colour. Not pure white, it's uh, mixed in with the uh, other colour, it's just more white. Just looking at the cap. <laughs> Now I was thinking afterwards, is that cap big enough to go on the bowl? I'm not sure that it is. <laughs> I might need to put a little bit more paint on one side just to make the cap bigger. I'll measure it and see. <laughs> Do 
Just smudging areas with my finger. <laughs> this is a clean up patrol. Looking for areas that just need a bit of tidying up. Sitting back with all my brushes in my hand. <laughs> Looking at what what needs improving, what what's wrong. What just needs a little bit of a accent of dark. You know, sometimes you uh, see things that aren't there and Sometimes the painting needs something more that isn't on the, uh, isn't real, isn't there. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I do do that. But it's a personal thing, isn't it, if you want, want to uh, do that. thinking do I need to do anything else what, what else can I see so that light went further up and then there's more light that hits that part of the bottle Just getting them shapes in. Sitting back, having a look. Doing, pulling that light down to the label. So, I took a step back and I thought this shape on this side wasn't quite right. <laughs> not saying that I make it look perfect because <laughs> I don't um, but I, I needed to improve that shape and I, I, when I paint with oils I use my finger a lot um, to get the smoothness of the shapes and to blend some areas as well <coughs> and uh, what I've found is uh, your finger works really well as a blender it's the best blending brush out there <laughs> so that's better that is definitely better um, I really struggled with that bottom part of the bottle to get that shape right I did really struggle with it and I needed to stand back get right back have a look and then try and improve it by so I say sit back and have a look sometimes you've got to get up and take a few steps back and then have a go <laughs> doing whatever needs to be done so I can almost blend that away if I wanted to It's a fine line between getting it to look right and 
it not looking right. <laughs> and I was on that line all the way through there. It was wrong, right, wrong, slightly wrong. <laughs> but again, this shows, you know, it's, it's, it's hard work. It's a lot of work to get it to look right. And if you're uh, doing commissions for people and they want something done, this, you know, this proves how much effort it takes to get something to look okay. It takes a lot of time and patience and effort and plugging away at the same painting. <laughs> And there we go, there's the uh, finished painting. Um, quite happy with it, and I'm looking forward to doing another one. So thanks very much for watching this painting episode, and I will see you at another one. Cheers, bye.